Здравствуйте. Do you want to go on a Soviet adventure? If you do, join me here in Bishkek, the capital of Kyrgyzstan, this Central Asian country which was part of the Soviet Union for nearly 70 years. All over the city you can find amazing examples of Soviet brutalist and Stalinistic architecture, and it's absolutely epic. So do you want to get Soviet today? If you do, come along. So now I welcome you to central Bishkek. This city is made up of parks and you can find parks all along this main drag called Chewy Street or Chewy Road. Uh, this park particularly has a bunch of interesting Soviet architecture and uh, it gives you a view of these beautiful Shan Mountains in the background. This central administration building, the National Philharmonic, and the university here are all amazing examples of Stalinistic architecture or things that came out during the 1950s and 1960s. But the first thing I want to show you is this monument, which was built in 1995 from scrap metal of a former monument that was made for the heroes of the fatherland. To give you guys a little context, I want to talk about Kyrgyzstan's Soviet past. Kyrgyzstan was a region of the Russian Empire, which was ruled over by czars. The last Tsar of the Russian Empire was Nicholas II, who was executed at the end of the Bolshevik Revolution, which was led by Vladimir Lenin. Lenin wanted to change Russia into a communist state to overthrow the oppressive ruling class of the Romanovs and to replace it with a communist people-led government. The Soviets created unions of communists in each of the bigger cities in the former Russian Empire and they all kind of worked together to overthrow the, the imperial rule. The Bolshevik Revolution ended at the end of 1917 where they executed uh, Tsar Nicholas II, they took, over the, uh, they took over the land, and they created the Soviet Union and Soviet states from Estonia all the way until the eastern part of the Russian Empire, we're talking like north of North Korea, joined the Soviet Union. A lot of the Soviet Union is defined by Vladimir Lenin, Stalin, Nikolai Khrushchev and these other Soviet leaders that shaped a lot of modern day Soviet Union. The Soviets planned to create this grand communist empire in a way with swaths of land in Central Asia, in East Asia, in Europe and even farther reaches. They, by doing this they created these large planned cities. So Bishkek was quite a small city um, but during the Soviet times they imported workers into the city. They called it Frunze and named it after a, one of the most famous uh, Soviet revolutionaries who was a Russian born in Kyrgyzstan and they created this large planned city here in Bishkek. They used different kinds of architectural styles to achieve this kind of Sovietification of the of the Kyrgyz people and of this kind of metropolitan area here in Bishkek as well. The architecture that you can find here in Bishkek has three kind of styles. You have the Stalinistic style, which was built in the 1940s, 1950s, which kind of were these huge, massive administration buildings with Greek motifs. These buildings were so big and were supposed to dwarf all of the citizens, kind of creating this state as like larger than life. You have the kind of 1950s block housing of Nikolai Khrushchev, where he expanded the Soviet cities for this influx of, uh, of new residents that was popping up after World War II. You then have this brutalist time of the 1970s and 1980s, where you get a lot of like really harsh kind of architectural buildings with a lot of like big concrete motifs and stuff like that. And I think this is a really good example of the brutalism that you find here in Bishkek and all over the Soviet Union. This statue was called the Fathers, Fathers of the Nation. There were life-size figures of different Soviet leaders of Kyrgyzstan here. They kind of got stolen after the subsequent fall of the Soviet Union, and so they replaced the kind of idea of the fatherland with this huge hammer, um, which was built in 1995. Very interesting, very modern, very kind of strange interpretation of this style, but beautiful. For any Soviet tour of Bishkek, I think we need to get some Soviet ice cream with some som. Let's find it. Pitnuts. Pitnuts. Thank you. 
fun fact about the Soviets is that they didn't often import products. They essentially made everything themselves. And so you typically only had one or two options for certain types of things. So in the Soviet Union, they were they had vanilla ice cream, plumber. That was like one of their big things. And they also made these Soviet style ice cream sandwiches. We've got a, we got a wafer. We've got some, uh, some nice vanilla ice cream. Let's give it. Mmm. Oh, it's a little melty. Mmm. Something about the ice cream. It's really, uh, it kind of is like Cool Whip. It's kind of like the best part about it. So here you've got some major administration buildings here in Bishkek. You can tell by the steeple, and on the top is the communist star. Uh, the cool part about some of the buildings here is that you can see some of the motifs they kind of brought in this Kyrgyz kind of style but they wanted to build these huge administration buildings with these massive pillars. And one thing you definitely won't find in the Soviet Union um, in Russia today is that on top of this, there's the hammer and sickle, the Soviet sort of motif. Um, most of that's been erased in Russia, but uh, here in Kyrgyzstan, you can still find it. They left it. These buildings are massive, massive. And behind here are these major squares. Since Bishkek is only from 1825, but really the city was built under the Soviet Union, it's like a planned city. So you have these big central streets and avenues. You've got uh, not really like an old town, but like an old Soviet avenue. So you have all of these huge buildings that were built during the time period. And then you have block housing, which was the way that the Soviets wanted to construct their cities. You don't find a lot of houses in the city. You find these huge, massive block houses and then these ones are more Stalin style three or four floors high with a shop underneath this is I think the best example of a very typical Stalin style building so you have Dom Soyuzov which means Union house, you've got star motifs, you've got the flag where the old Soviet Union flag would have been. And then you have these Greek kind of columns with a big door in the front. Super typical Stalin stuff. The key word when talking about Soviet stuff and going Soviet adventurizing as Bolton Bankrupt says, is big. This is the White House. This is the, what the equivalent of their parliament building or where the president works house in Kyrgyzstan. But one of the most striking parts about it, besides just the absolute size of it for a country of only 7 million people, are that the Soviets built these huge fountains everywhere in all of these public squares. But as you guys can probably see, it's empty. This is a common theme for basically all the fountains in the city. It's the fact that these fountains are massive and the cost for running them, you can see here, uh, is high. So a lot of them just kind of lay empty in front of the big, White House. If there's a protest, it happens right here, right in front of the steps. Because there's been a lot of corruption in Kyrgyzstan over the last 30 years after the Soviets took off, probably before, this is the location where the Kyrgyz do their protests. So when they had a mask mandate for COVID, it was swarmed with thousands and thousands of Kyrgyz who come here to protest to show the president they mean business and they want change. And so this is one of the only countries where things didn't really lock down. I think it's just too poor and people didn't want to lose their jobs. And so they came here, they protested in front of the White House and they got what they wanted in this case. One of the most enduring Soviet era buildings here is the Kino Theater, the movie theater. And here you can actually see they still have some really good examples of Soviet era mosaics, which they use to brighten up the buildings. And here, you can see the hammer and sickle still up. Welcome now to Alato Square. So the Soviets always in the center of their cities used to build these huge you sized places to show off military parades, to show off the size and strength of the Soviet Union. So we've got these huge administrative buildings here. All around this huge square, we've got a place where the Soviet flag would have stood with the guard Katawa. And here we have the former Lenin Museum, which is now the National Museum of Kyrgyzstan. It's closed. Um, and you have all of this space to have people. There was uh, a few problems with this, but the biggest one was that they just didn't have the people to fill up this space. And they didn't have the budget to continue to fill stuff and to build stuff around this area. 
So now this is a huge open space. A lot of kids like skateboarding, hanging out. But uh, for modern day Kyrgyzstan, the museum's closed. They just, uh, they've been revamping it for the last like 10 years. People come here to take pictures. And then you have this kind of open area now that's got like cafes, but the intention of how it's used today is very different than what the Soviets had imagined. On the other side of the Soviet museum, you'll find the biggest statue of Vladimir Lenin in Central Asia. And behind it is a Stalin built Supreme Court building that was actually once the American University of Central Asia. The next thing I'm gonna show you guys and the thing I really wanna characterize is that the Soviets planned everything. So here they actually have a big park where you can go there's a ferris wheel you can like take your family they had this was originally a school they have these big administration buildings but more importantly they thought about ways to make life for the soviet members of society good and fun so almost every city had a dom kulturi which is like a culture house where you could see different kinds of plays where your kids could show stuff off it was a place for people to meet they had a circus, which I'll show you in a second. They had movie theaters. Everything was planned. They had an idea. Now we have maybe the most Soviet looking of all the buildings. This is the Bishkek Circus. You've got this weird green spaceship thing with the classic circular windows here. You got this bright yellow, Soviets liked bright colors. It's super weird. Let's go check it out. This thing is so incredibly 70s. You have these kind of tiled mosaic floors. You would have had the whole city come here and see the power of the Soviet Union and what kind of entertainment they could bring. The Soviet Union was of course known for its gymnastics and acrobatics. They probably imported elephants to show the people, you know, people from Kyrgyzstan and especially people in the former Soviet Union weren't allowed to travel. So a lot of the travel that they could do was by getting things brought to them, such as visiting people from China, visiting performers from other communist states. And they all came here. Now we're at the piece de resistance of our Soviet tour. This is a place I'm really excited to show you, so let's check it out. This is the wedding palace of Bishkek. So an interesting thing is that the Kyrgyz people are quite religious. A lot of people here are Muslim and there's a minority of the Russians, of course, who are Orthodox. But during the Soviet Union, being religious was illegal. So instead of getting married in a church or in a mosque, you got married at the wedding palace. This thing is really epic, super Soviet style. They've got a big fountain with a mosaic running through it. Of course, it's empty as all fountains in Bishkek are. And I think the best part about it is you can rent, it's still in use, you can rent this love limo chariot if you want. Look at this thing. Wow. Here's the number if you guys want it. You got some gold, you can ride up like Cinderella to the ball. Epic. Wow, that place is incredible. The stained glass. And people are still getting married in there, which is, I think, the, the coolest part about it. Living history. So guys, I think that is the end of our Soviet tour here in Bishkek. I really wanted to make this video because I think Americans have a very weird and skewed opinion of what the Soviet Union was and what it means for the countries of the former Soviet Union today. Hope I shined a little bit of light on the cool architecture, a little bit about the history, and uh, yeah, how, how, you know, maybe it's different than what you thought. Give it a chance, come travel to these countries. Nice people, really, really nice people. And beautiful buildings. So that'll do it for today. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Uh, we got lots of stuff coming from Kyrgyzstan. We're gonna do some food. We're gonna do a massive road trip next week. Very, very excited about it. 
and we got a lot of stuff coming. A lot of stuff coming. So, see you later from Kyrgyzstan. Spasiba Bolshoi, Edas Fedanya.